while back, I hopped in my car and I was going to watch the football with my friends one evening. And unfortunately, I didn't make it to my destination because I crashed my car. 50 stitches in my eye, a battered and bruised body, and a complete write-off of a car. See, this didn't happen because I was speeding. This happened because I, I wasn't fully present in the moment. I was, my mind was always preoccupied in future thoughts. And that evening when I jumped in the car, my mind was already at its destination. I used to do a similar thing when I went to the toilet to do a pee. Where I'd start doing a pee, and uh, just as I'd initially start, I'd immediately flush the pan. Not halfway through, but immediately. See, in both these instances were signs of underlying anxious tendencies that I just wasn't aware of. And that was a real recipe for disaster. And it was combined at the time and fueled by a number of drugs, alcohol, a bad diet, and negative thoughts. And so this culminated in panic disorder. For two and a half years, I suffered with constant frequent panic attacks where I was heavily medicated and caged by fear, and, and I really did reach breaking point. And so I reached out to my doctor and asked him if I could see a psychologist. And so this happened. And then I met Rona. And Rona gave me a number of breathing techniques, techniques that allowed me in a short space of time to start reducing this sort of improper mindset and, and reducing my medications. And she really opened my mind up to how to look at life in a holistic and healthful perspective. And that really encouraged me and empowered me to, to really understand that I had autonomy and power over this state. And so I, I was able to move forward from that space. A couple of years later, I'm 23, and I decide to leave full-time employment and enroll in a social sciences course at college. But still, at this point, there was something just holding me back. <clears throat> and I really just, I, I, I couldn't understand what that was. And so fast forward a year, and I um, stood in front of my lawyer. And he says, you're looking at two years in jail for this. And I was flabbergasted. A few months later, I am standing in front of a, a magistrate. And I've got my bags packed. I've, I'm completely terrified. And in one hand, I have an, an acceptance letter to study psychology at Glasgow University. And the other, I'm looking at two years in jail. And so I'm left thinking, just of all these positive changes that have occurred, how, th how the hell did I get here? Was it because my dad left when I was five? Was it because I wasn't encouraged properly? Was it because I didn't have the right mentors? Was it because I didn't try hard enough? Was it because I smoked weed every single day? Was it because my mum's poor mental health? Was it because of my poor mental health? Was it because I bullied? Was it because I was bullied? Was it because one of my friends died right in front of me? And then I realized that it was because of all of those things. And so the judge's voice, the magistrate's voice, snapped me back into reality. And then I heard those words. Fortunately, this time. See, in that moment, I was completely overjoyed because I knew I'd been given a second chance. I became fully aware of how all those past experiences impact me, fully aware that I had control over my life and that I was going to move forward consciously. And so I did. <clears throat> and from that point, I really took control, but although I'd made that decision to move forward, there was there was some, some residue, some residue that had really damaged my belief systems. And see, beliefs are important because our beliefs shape the way we see the world and shape how we behave. And at that time, my beliefs were weak. I didn't believe I was smart. 
I thought you had to be born with it. And really, I just didn't think I was capable of success, academic success or anything at all. And so at that moment, I decided to set new intentions. Set new intentions, make new decisions, and really take action. And through doing this, I was able to lay new neural pathways in my brain. Neural pathways that started restructuring and rewiring my mind. And that process continued habitually, consistently, repeatedly over a long time, term period. That really strengthened those more positive beliefs. Isaac Newton's first law suggests that an object that is static remains static. However, an object in motion will continue in motion. And I took this mentality and really started utilizing it and moving forward with momentum, and that became my default mode. Hands up, who in the room has meditated before? That is a lot of people, a lot more than expected. Hands up who meditates every day, the disciplined ones. Way less. See, I don't know about you guys, but I had some preoccupations with meditation in the outset. I thought it was for monks or hippies, and that was it. But I soon thought back to my experiences with Rona, my psychologist, and, and her giving me those breathing techniques and the positive changes that they had brought about in my life. And so I realized that even though she didn't express it in such a way, those were meditative techniques. And so what I'd like to do today is demonstrate a meditative technique that I used back then and that I still use to this very day. So this technique is simple. Six, two, seven times four. Don't be put off by this sort of mathematical equation. It's simply, you breathe in for six, you hold for two with a pause, and you exhale for seven. And you focus on the numbers. So let's give it a whirl for those who aren't, haven't tried meditation. Okay, so just center yourself, ground yourself. Breathe in for six. Hold for two. And exhale for seven. I sneakily put that in there so I could calm myself down. But really, don't underestimate the, the power and the simplicity of that strategy. Because that strategy can really help you move from a state of what's known as fight or flight, stress response, to one of relative calm and ease. See, fight or flight is actually an evolutionary inbuilt strategy, an evolutionary inbuilt system that enhances our breathing, it enhances our heart rate, our blood pressure, and it releases a number of stress hormones. It's said that 80% of doctor's visits are actually involve some form of stress. And so it seems that this present current climate that we're in just now, a lot of people are walking around in a sort of low level stress mode. And this is because of how we are living our lives. This is because we're afraid to say no to our bosses and employers. We're always saying yes, yes, yes. Or because of our hurried and frantically paced lives. And so that simple technique, that can empower you. Those, that stress response, what it does is it actually prevents your brain from releasing positive neurotransmitters called catecholamines. This is a collective term given to neurotransmitters such as oxytocin, dopamine, vasopressin, serotonin, and these allow you to think and feel positively. And so just by pausing for a moment, six to seven times four, you repeat that habit, you meditate for a minute, you can really empower yourself to reduce these stress hormones and bring about more positive hormones, hormones and neurotransmitters that really allow you to make more well-informed, conscious decisions for your life in a state of calm and relative peace and be empowered. I remember back to this fact I came across a while back. It said that the average human has roughly 80,000 thoughts per day, of which 80% are negative. Irrespective of the validity of this fact, it kind of got me thinking about my thoughts and where they were at. 
And so I started checking in, and this became like a little game and a habit. And I realized that all of a sudden, that actually had some validity to it, that my thoughts were proportionally negative. And so I set out on this mission, this mission to sort of counteract and, and change this ratio. And I'd done this first by waking up every morning and getting into my toilet. And I would stand in front of the toilet in the morning. My, I, was with, I was in a flat with my ex-flatmate, and he could hear me doing this. And I would recite positive affirmations. And these are simply mantras. It's known as tools of the mind. And some generic ones are, I can, it's possible, I, I can do it, and sometimes even, I'm sexy. And you can really alter these to your circumstances and specific needs. I would also take an elastic band. I couldn't find an elastic band this morning. I found this, believe it or not, in the street on the way here. And uh, I'd take an elastic band, and what I would do was any time a negative or disempowering thought entered my mind, I would give myself a little wrap in the wrist. And that would condition me to really check in with my mind and realize where my head was at. It would condition me to interrupt that negative thought pattern and replace it with more positive thoughts. And soon I realized that this habit, over time of pausing, realizing, and replacing, it helped me manage the mechanics of my mind and move forward and start to enter into a better state and so that I could take more action in life. <clears throat> People become motivated through one of two reasons, inspiration or desperation. For me, it was desperation. Today, I'm touching a few simple techniques, simple and practical techniques that you can utilize in your lives. Here are some of the ones that I involve myself in every single day. And you can see that there's loads there. But I started out really small. I reduced those habits to ridiculous. I took incremental steps. And every time I gained a little more competence, I'd gain a little more confidence, and I'd build a, a bigger foundation of these useful resources. And there's so many resources and ways that we can learn those things. I've utilized all of those. And in fact, my favorite one at this moment, and my friends laugh about this when I say this, is that I love podcasts. I feel like I'm a bit of a podophile, actually. I have an unnecessary interest in podcasts. And there's, these are all free. And so what I'd really encourage you to do is just buy into this experimenter's ethos. An ethos whereby you look at information objectively, where you explore and, and play with it and have fun. Because by maximizing and really stacking these strategies, they, they made me experience some really pr profound changes in my life. I was able to become a life coach. I was able to attain a psychology degree here at Glasgow University and start a business whereby in just six months, I was able to optimize the lives of over 3,000 people. And my new purpose is to continue that trend, is to help others realize their potential so that they can become contributors and really have an impact in this world. And I want to leave you with a final thought, a thought that comes just more from the heart, and that is that irrespective of who you are, what you've done, your circumstances, where you're at at this current juncture in your life, if you, can, if you can pause, if you can make new intentions, make new decisions, and take greater action, and start to play with these habits and stack them, then you truly can actualize your potential. Thank you. <clears throat>